Live from the board game room, it's the insane board game freak show with your host, me, the insane board game freak. Yo, come on, let's go, everybody. <laughs> In this episode, use the computer to launch the to catch the criminal. Electronic computer programs the action. Proven scanner provides the hidden clues. The electric computer detective game. Manhunt. The electric computer detective game. Quick, to the board game room. All right, here it is. Manhunt. All right, so. In the game Manhunt, you can get these play markers, which are cool. I like when they do that with the little cars drawn around. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, looks like those old, like, um, Godzilla or King Kong movies from back in the day. And, you know, King Kong's, like, walking around and <laughs> step on him and stuff. Okay. So you got these spots here, too. These color codes are color-coded for a reason. I'll tell you why. They're color-coded 1 to 8. All right? And you get the spaces like um, stakeout, stakeout spaces, crime lab spaces, witness spaces, okay? Scene of crime spaces, all right? Now, um, you're going to also get this device here. Now, unfortunately, I'm sorry, but... um. I don't have a D battery, you know, you know, to, um, use for this contraption here, but, um, I'm going to try my best to, uh, you know, instruct the uh, game anyway, and, you know, do a review about the game, so, <clears throat> that's that device you're going to be using, and this is, uh, the number of spaces that, um, you're going to be moving in, in the board, on the board, this is, um, if it's going to be online or offline, you're going to see now, but that's if you, um, Land if you land on a space though um that's already occupied, or somebody else lands on your space too that you're occupying, you're gonna be using this one and reading receive a broadcast. Okay, so that's what these do. Um, these buttons here don't do nothing, but this one does. That's on and off. And when you turn this on, all these do, all this thing does, is just spin around, and it determines, you know, um, whether or not what is what, all right, so, duh, all right, so now you're gonna get these clue sheets here, all right, you're gonna get this, um, this little, um, um, piece of equipment here, it's, uh, this utensil is going to puncture holes in here, in the clue scanner, after you, um, put the clue scanner card into the clue scanner itself, so that's pretty cool, because that's going to help you determine what is going on. Like, if there's a hole in here, um, there's going to be, uh, you know, um, scene, you know, 1B or something like that, all right? And then there's going to be, like, either, like, a, a witness. It, it, it all shows you with the detective handbook and all this stuff in here like that. So, like, it could be, like, you know, um, bank robber. Only a daytime, you know, a middle age, you know, whatever. And that's it, okay? And then these numbers are what you're going to be jotting down your clue sheets. This is what's going to um, help you do a process of elim elimination. So this is what this card does too. So you're going to open only the number tab requested by the opponent. And let only him see what's under it, all right? So that's it with that. So now you're going to be, um, now after stopping the number, this is what you're going to read in there. All right. So, okay. So that, 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 that shows you how to do that. So you can pause that and read that if you want. Now you're going to read out, you have these books that say read out. Okay. The read out books to clue scanner and suspect data. And it's going to show you read out for murders. All right. And then that's going to be scene one. You know, like, um, A, so, you know, B, and it's going to show you whatever hole is punctured on the scanner. It's going to help you read out what happened in the game. So it can help you figure out how to solve the case and then win the game. 
All right. So now in this game, um, you're going to be using, you know, these things here, this equipment here for that, you know, to determine out how to play that now. Okay, so now at the beginning of the game, um, players agree who's going to go first and what type of cr crime is going to happen. You know, either if it's going to be robbery, murder, or swindle. And you're going to use the readout card diagram book and the suspects in the section of the book matching that crime. So um, you're going to get, you know, this book here. And it's going to show you, you know, like, um, hey, yo, Fingers Fred and uh, Slippery Sam. Hey, I got Slobber and Sam, the board game. Um, the game, actually. It's not a board game. Dynamite, dynamite what? Dynamite murder, dun 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 dun. Yeah, or S Steve Adore. Hey, everybody adores Steve. What do you mean he committed a murder? He, he didn't commit a murder. Well, he's adorable. We would love Steve. We would we, we adore him. You get Snake Eyed Sydney, yeah, because he always rolls those dice, Snake Eyes, or Trigger Tom. He's got an itchy trigger finger. Uh, Slim Sue, she's a skinny broad. Hey, yo. Uh, anxious Annie, she's always rocking back and forth. Hey, she's always anxious for something. Uh, Reggie straight. Hey, yo, I'm gonna give it to you straight, okay? I didn't, I didn't murder nobody. All right? Forget about it. All right? Mom bow. Mom bow. Mom, mama bow. Hey, yo, mom bow. Mom bow Italiano. Hey, yo. With the meatballs and the bacala. And stuff like that. Monte Carlo. Hey, I had, hey, th this, this guy, uh, he, 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 uh, made up the sandwich, the Monte Carlo sandwich at the, at the deli down the block from where I live. Hey, the Monte Carlo hero sandwich. And that, and that, that, that that's basically it. So you're gonna be looking at the um, you know, owns a gun, has strong hands, could strangle, carries a knife. That's not a knife. This is a knife. Um, known to victim, no struggle. You know, cuts phone wires, has nothing else better to do, but um, offers forces of entry. And um, you know, that that's basically it. Hey yo, Gimpy Mo. Hey yo. Walks the limp here, hey, and uh, he always wears a hat and his own briefcase full of his magic tricks and stuff like Felix the Cat, yo, his left thumb, they call him Lefty, and uh, his right hand, anyway, I can go on forever like this, <laughs> doing a comedy act about it, but, um, it's gonna, you know, tell you all about this stuff here, and, uh, you know, all about the criminals and stuff like that, now, you're gonna be using the 16 scanner cards, they're gonna be shuffled, right, now, these are the 16 scanner cards, all right? There's 16 of them, right? So, 16 scanner cards, oh, spoof off. Now, how do I know that, that spoof off the uh, song 16 Candles from back in the day uh, isn't going to make it to the uh, top 10 on the radio? But um bum bum Okay, so anyway, um, so... The 16 scanner cards are going to be shuffled and held black side up, all right, when entering and being put through the, the clue scanner here, okay? So now when you do that, um, one is drawn and slid into this clue scanner until only the white tab is showing, all right? So now, um, so that means you got to put it all the way in, and when this is, when this tab here, the white tab is showing, that's good, because then you need that, because you got to easily be able to hold on to that to pull out this card um, that I'm holding right now out of this scanner, okay? So now it's going to show you, you know, what what went on in the murder and in the, in the, in the, the mystery, right, that you got to solve. So now it, it'll re it reveals the solution of the crime is basically what I'm saying. So that um, players must... Um, also, uh, be given the readout book, so the detective's handbook, and a blank clue sheet, which, um, they carefully use and place in, in the handbook. So, you're, you're gonna place it in this handbook here, okay? So now, um, when, when doing that, um, what, um, what I want to tell you? Uh, well, you wouldn't know, I'm the one giving the review. All right, so anyway, um, all players in use, you know, uh, will use the computer by moving its lever on, and, uh, no, duh, really, Dick Tracy, I mean, like, you know, where'd you park the squad car?
Okay, so now you're gonna use that this machine here. You're gonna turn it on and you're gonna um, use these dials. They're gonna be spinning around. All right. So um, all the players must visit scene one of the crime. All right. So that's that. So now you're gonna be um, going across the board here, and you're gonna moving around by using the indicator on this thing here the number of space that's shown on the orange dial all right so now um while doing that all players in turn we use the computer you're going to turn on and use the number dial i told you about and the player who dials the highest number chooses a car and places it in one of the badge spaces so you're going to go here like for example there in the badge space wow red dragnet great song from the clash anyway so you're going to do that and then um you got you must stop on either red one space by exact count, all right? So any red space, you got you know stop on either of these red spaces by exact count, all right? So that's what you got to do. All right? So now you're going to um operate the spinner and when the computer stops that online, the players use the clue scanner here. So that's when you're going to use you know, if it's offline or online. All right, so now when you landed there in that space, is it online or offline? Let's see what it says. If it says offline, you're going to do something else I'll explain. But if it's online, you're going to use this scanner here and break out the cards and use the scanner and everything else that goes along with it, okay? So now all players must visit the scene one crime space and moving there by spins a uh, computer number dial, okay? And they must stop on either the red space. Now when a player stops in that space, um, you know, if it's offline, he waits on that space, okay, until he successfully spins an online. Now, if it's online, uh, the player uses the, the scanner and that um, this utensil that I showed you before, this thing, all right, looks like a thermometer or something. Now, you're going to use that, and um, you're going to puncture the holes in the scanner to determine what's what, all right? So now... Um, uh, you're going to, um, use that and now, um, you should be able to, you know, push down and use the scanner correctly. And this way the opponents will not find out which hole is punched in the scanner card. Okay. So now there's only, um, one, uh, punched hole in each row. Okay. So now each time after using the, the, um, the utensil and, and the uh, scanner, uh, the player marks the results in the correct row on the clue sheet in this handbook. Now, while their opponent is uh, taking turns, um, now a player should check out the readout diagram, okay, and write it on the right column on the clue sheet. Information found in the readout box matching the n lettered number bo uh, box where the X was located. So... You're going to be reading out this and marking things down here to help you in your clue sheet. And even these numbers too. It's all process of elimination, okay? So when reading this thing, you got to just focus on what you're doing and just read it out right so no mistakes are made because then you're going to get the wrong reading. All right, so now each time you know, the, the player marks the results in the correct row on the sheet in the handbook, that's that. Now while their opponents are taking turns... They're going to do the thing with the readout box I told you about. And now on his next turn, the player moves their car by spinning the number dial uh, toward either or on the yellow two spaces. Now, he must land there by exact count and repeat what is called for in the rules I explained before, all right, by using the uh, utensil and the clue scanner, all right? So now, uh, all players must visit scene... Of crime one and two in that order before starting further investigation. All right. So now, um, further investigation at the visiting scene of crime two. The players search for more clues. They keep searching for clues and they may collect them three ways. Now, uh, by visiting the other numbered locations on the board or by landing on the same space as an opponent, by returning to, to headquarters, any badge space and calling an opponent back to there, you know, for, uh, like a conference meeting or something to talk to them, you know, about the, the, the case. Now, players usually use a combination of all three. Um, so like, uh, 
For example, like visiting locations. A player's car may go from scene one of crime two to the other pictures in any order. Now that is, it, it may go to witness three or four or stake out seven or eight or one of the crime labs five or six. You know, he must land on its color number by exact count, spin the computer for online, etc. The same as he did for scenes one and two, all right? So now landing on the same space, when a player lands on, his, on the same space as somebody else uh, by exact count, um, the opponent there is a possible exchange of information. So like the player spins a computer again and uses the red broadcast receive dial to accomplish this, all right? So now um, the point is stops and receive, so the player can ask and see what happened and what was what would the opponent uh, wrote down in, in the hand in their handbook under any number from three to eight okay so now that that's that so now you would use that in accordance to what's on the computer there um now the opponent must open or turn back only the flap of the cover of his handbook opposite the number requested for example like using the printed copy in the handbook on the flat five is x zero zero x o o o you know so like the opponent must show this so that only the that player involved will see it you know the player then copy uh, their information in the handbook too and therefore doesn't have to visit their location on the board all right and now when the opponent um sees that the pointer of the computer stops in the broadcast instead of receive the opponent may ask the player for information by number instead. Either way, you know, um, those rules must be followed, though. Okay, so now, note that in, in any one turn, information may be ex asked from only one number, whether or not a clue is revealed. Knowing that he may broadcast instead of receive information, a player should think, is it to my advantage or not, um, before moving my car to a space occupied by another opponent all right so calling an opponent's car back to headquarters when a player lands on any of the four badge spaces by exact count he may if he wishes call any opponent to that same badge space for a conference meeting um for example calling the green car back you know um or you know calling the blue car back or the black car back to headquarters here whatever you know they, they can now talk and um, it means that um, like blue must be placed on that badge space immediately, and or black may be placed there must be placed there immediately. Um, the the players um, who called out the car, you know, then spins the computer again using the broadcast receive dial, and you and and follows the rules with that landing on the same space are followed. Okay, so now both cars must move the, from the badge space in their next turns, okay? Um, eliminating suspects each time a player uses the probe, um, the utensil, and uh, clue scanner, or, or adds information from op uh, uh, opponents. Um, they should write down the clues and you know on the sheet and um, read out the diagram as soon as uh, possible, okay? So now... During the time that the opponents are taking turns, the players should check out the suspects and eliminate the process of elimination of who those records are shown, and they do not have to match clues, okay? So now this is done by crossing out the circle numbers that match the R, M, or S numbers under, or letters, whatever, the, the suspect's pictures, okay? So now, that's how you would do that. Now, um, uh... Once a suspect number is eliminated, the player does not have to check that number um, when the when new clues are found ever again. So, when a player has eliminated all but one circled number, that number should identify the suspect as a culprit. Um, after double checking the clues he has written in a handbook uh, with the record or the the record of that um, suspect, the record of that suspect, the player removes. Um, his clue sheet and secretly writes on the back of it the name and uh, number of the one he thinks is guilty. After announcing that he thinks he has solved the crime, he turns the clue scanner face down and secretly pulls out the scanner card by the tab um, as far enough to, to read the culprit's name for that crime. 
Now, um, if the name does not match the name he has written on the clue sheet, he slides the scanner card back into the clue scanner again, and he's out of the game. He must not reveal the correct name to the opponents, nor tell them who he incorrectly thought was the culprit. This would spoil the game for the other players. The first player to correctly identify the culprit wins the game, and that is Manhunt, the board game. Hold up right there. We got you. Now let's go up top and see what final thoughts about the game are. All right, so my final thoughts. Now, what do I think about this game? All right, I'll tell you what I think about the game. All right, let me tell you what I think about the game. All right, I love the game. The game is so fun to play. It's like you're you feel like you're in on the action because you are because you're playing the game, but it feels like it's like real to life action packed game that's like Kojak that I explained you know videos ago whatever, and um, I like Kojak. I like using the merry-go-round thing, you know, the turntable piece, whatever. It's cool and all, and reading. But there's a lot more of using this device that makes it more fun to play this game. You know, I like using the scanner. It's just, it's more fun to, like, you know, use this, you know, utensil and, you know, use the scanner and, you know, figure out the clue and everything, and the clues, and then you gotta go to the readout book, then you gotta go to the handbook, and you gotta mark down things on the, on the pages here, and then you gotta use the little car pieces in the game to drive around the game board, it, it just, it just eckin' cool, it just, it's just so cool, I, I love it a lot, you know, I mean, like, the pictures in the game is cool, it's got that, it's got that, that 60s, 70s feel to it, like, when you, when I play the game, you know, like that nostalgia feeling, you know. Um, I like I like the game. It's fun. I like how you could uh, interact with other players and stuff in the game and have a conference and everything. And, and this this device tells you what to do and everything. Um, too bad I couldn't get it up and running. You know, I didn't have a D battery. I, I, had, I got all different kinds of batteries, but obviously all of a sudden, you know, unfortunately I couldn't have the D battery to operate this device. But whatever about that, I was still able to explain the game to you and everything and how to play it. So when you get this game, you'll have fun playing it by watching the video and going back, rewinding it and seeing how to play it. If you have trouble reading the instructions, whatever. So, but um, it, it it's a cool, fun game. I recommend it. That's Manhunt game. Um, Manhunt, the electronic, the electric computer detective game. The board game. Well, that's it, everybody. Listen, this game is over. Board game freak out. I'm the board game freak.